In this video, I'm gonna talk about epoxy coated reinforcing steel and why many people are moving away from it. We'll talk about other technologies that can be used to prolong corrosion inside your reinforced concrete. And at the end, I will talk about my favorite technology, the one that I think is the best, but you gotta wait till the end for that one. My name is Tyler Lay, and I got a secret. I've kind of got a crush on concrete. Corrosion of rebar inside concrete is a huge deal. Many people say that it is the most costly, the most damaging, and the most scary of the durability mechanisms for concrete. So how does this happen? Well, one method is that chlorides come from the outside of the concrete and they come in over time and more and more. And finally, when they get to the reinforcing steel, they break something down called the passive layer and it starts corrosion. Now the corrosion doesn't happen in one spot. The passive layer goes away everywhere and the corrosion happens pretty much uniformly around the bar. So corrosion begins when the chlorides reach this critical level at the bar. This is called the chloride threshold level. And I've talked more about it in previous videos. A common way to deal with corrosion of metals is to paint them. I've shown a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge here. Did you know that they start on one side of the Golden Gate Bridge and continuously paint it from one side to the other? And once they finish, they start over again and paint it again because they're so scared of corrosion. And here's a picture from the top. What if this is your job? This guy's done painting and he knows in about a year, he's gonna be back at the exact same spot. Well, why don't we do this for the rebar that goes inside concrete. Guess what? We can. Here's a picture of that process. Here a rebar that's being powder coated with this epoxy type material or like a paint on the surface of the bar itself. Now this is commonly used. You can see this on a bridge deck and if you've ever seen green rebar, then ladies and gentlemen, you have seen the infamous epoxy coated reinforcing bar. Now, it's pretty cool. It's pretty widely used. There's lots of people that, that, that use it because they're concerned about corrosion and they want to apply it on the surface of the rebar and their thought is that it's going to help keep the outside chlorides from getting to the rebar and reaching this, this chloride threshold level and starting some type of corrosion. But research done on field structures by Texas, Florida, Virginia and Ontario DOT, so those DOTs in America and in Canada, have found poor performance of epoxy coated reinforcing bar in the field. Now Virginia is the most quoted of these. They looked at 18 different bridges and they found that after four years that 90% of the epoxy coated rebar was debonded. What? Why does this happen? Well, to learn more, let's look at a rebar. Now, if you just look over it and you look really, really carefully, you'll see right around here, there's kind of a spot. Let's zoom in. If we get closer again, we see that spot. Let's zoom in even further. And ooh, that, that's damage. That's where in handling the bar, this spot has been rubbed off. The epoxy has been removed. And it's not just in one spot, as we're getting closer, there's certain spots that our eyes couldn't even see. You can see them here and here. And do you see these nicks right here? That's our small scratches inside the epoxy coating. Do the scratches go all the way through? Nobody really knows. Now, it kind of makes sense that rebar is kind of handled heavily, excessively. They're kind of mean to it. They kind of beat on it and drag it and bend it and tie it and cut it and do all kinds of things to it. So it makes sense that in this coating, there might be some nicks. So what are the issues with this? Well, there's two big ones. Let's talk about the first one. Well, if you have a damaged spot, well, as the chlorides come in and they get closer and they get closer and they start corrosion, well, corrosion doesn't happen uniformly over the bar. Corrosion's gonna happen in one spot. All of that corrosion, instead of happening at the surface, is gonna be concentrated in one region. And this is called pitting corrosion. This is this accelerated corrosion in one region, and this is scary. This can cause your bars to break suddenly. 
in one location where these holidays or these damage regions are. Here's a picture of this accelerated corrosion from bars that are being exposed. You can see this bar is corroding kind of uniformly throughout, but this bar in that one spot has this deep pitting corrosion. So what's another issue that can happen? I said there was two. The other thing that can happen is at the surface, there's actually starts to be debonding. The chlorides work their way up and start to pull up the actual rebar. Some of it may be corrosive products, some of it may be something else, some of it may just be a, a chemical change of the epoxy. Nobody really knows. And over time it debonds and then it debonds more and there's just this pocket underneath the bar. And this is what Virginia saw, this debonding of the reinforcing. And what this looks like is you'll see a discoloration in the epoxy coating and that means it's not really bonded along the length. So what, what can you do about this? Well, you can do special tie wires, okay? You can be very, very careful how you handle the bars, but you can see even on this one, they've tried to take all these special care and look, I see a nick right there. What you're supposed to do is get out with this special paint and coat that spot. Do you think you're gonna catch every spot in a bridge or in a building? Are you gonna miss any? Well, if you do, those are weak spots where corrosion may happen. But are there other solutions to this? Oh baby, there's tons of them. There's all kinds of people working on this, all kinds of companies trying to make this happen. Some people are trying to do improved coatings around the rebar. Others are trying to change the rebar altogether. Use different chemical types, use stainless rebar, use this chrome modified, this poor man's Poor man stainless rebar, use fiber reinforced plastics, use basalts or glass. There's all kinds of different solutions out there. But why aren't these more popular? Well, number one, they all cost more because they're not really widely produced. And civil engineering is totally awesome. One thing about it is that we deal in high volumes. So our costs have to be low. I like to say we're like the Walmart or the Amazon of engineering. We deal in huge volumes of stuff. So we need to make it cheap. We try to make things more expensive. It doesn't work really well in our systems. Availability is another issue. Even if we wanted to make every single rebar stainless steel, we couldn't. We don't pr produce enough every year. All these rebars too are not addressed in our building codes right now. The only thing that is addressed is normal rebar and epoxy coated. So structural engineers, when they're trying to decide how these rebars are gonna change things, they don't know what to do because the codes don't give them guidance. Ah, but there's some great research coming out. I'm gonna reference it in the notes below and I think this is gonna change. I think there's gonna be more guidance in the future. But what do I think's best? I know if I didn't answer this question, I would get it in my comments below. I think personally that galvanized rebar is the best solution. Why? Because it's a balance. Number one, it increases your chloride threshold level by two to four times. Number two, the cost increase is minimal. It's less than 10% of the cost of the rebar. And it's widely available. Hot dip galvanizing, taking rebar and dipping it in molten zinc and taking it out, that's a widely used process used in all types of metal treatment. There's proven field performance with it and there's minimal impact on your structural design. And that's why for me, I think it's the best choice. Now, it may not be for you. And if it's not, I want you to tell me why in the comments below. Also, you gotta watch out for hot dip galvanizing. When you put it in the fresh cement paste, some of the galvanizing will be eaten away, but there's a solution to this. You just use a thicker layer of galvanizing. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment. Take care, bye.